Hi, I'm John Meredith and I'm pleased to be speaking to you today to describe some of the work we've been doing in Wales with OpenAir. The NHS Wales Informatics Service is a national organisation to support the delivery of digital health and care across Wales, established in 2010. But there are a few key things you need to be aware of about Wales. Wales is the home of rugby, regardless of who originally invented it. And we're famous for our wonderful singing, not to mention our wonderful singers. And there are a few of these roaming around. So what's so significant about the single source of truth? Well, this approach separates out two concerns, principally the clinical model itself and the structured data persistence. The single source of truth approach allows us to reduce the digital variation that exists, which ultimately means better quality data, which can then support clinical decision-making processes, as well as provide a more stable platform from which to develop applications. For example, we may wish to store data from an outpatient diabetes consultation, and data items such as blood pressure or pulse should be described in a way that is both equitable in terms of the data persistence and the underlying model that describes it in addition to be able to describe a wider clinical use case, for example, a foot assessment. So the single source of truth could help us define a prudent approach to the definition, capture, storage, and ultimate reuse of clinical data across Wales. To date, NHS Wales architecture has principally been concerned with the repositories that can support document management and also that of test requests, results, etc. There's been no clinical data repository to store blood pressures or BMI calculations, for example. Enwys initiated a project to assess the goodness of fit for open air as part of national architecture. We focused on four key areas, they being legacy data, end-to-end -end platform development, the service layer, including data query and interoperability use cases, and finally, the clinical data standard process. I'm going to talk briefly through one such case study that was used during the review, the Hepatitis C Clinical Assessment Form. This electronic form provides a means of capturing the clinical assessment from an outpatient appointment. It relies on data derived from direct form entry as well as leveraging data sources for test results. The goal of this exercise was to see how easily the current form could be modelled in open air to test the efficacy of the modelling approach and tooling and also assess the degree by which previously published archetypes could be implemented. At this point, we can treat the Hep C form as a legacy application because it was not architected to work with a native structured data format. However, it is a good example of an application which we may choose to re-architect in the future once we have that capability online. Once the template was built, we could also use it to support some of the other objectives, for example, mapping legacy data structures and also building demonstrator apps using low code e-forms. So how did the modeling turn out? Well, I was pleasantly surprised. There's one thing I was slightly pessimistic about was the ability to reuse previously architected archetypes. But when we looked at it, we discovered that 84% of the needed archetypes were already available in one shape or form. On the International Clinical Knowledge Manager, nine of the archetypes used were published, whilst 11 were in draft state. One of the models needed to be specialised based on a previous archetype, whilst three new ones were required. However, we did hit a snag, as one archetype had potentially two different approaches. Something we realized as we encountered some of the difficulties in terms of the modeling approach was really developing that head knowledge so that we have that ability to actually pick the right route through. So when do you specialize? When do you build an archetype from scratch? One of the findings is that there has to be careful consideration associated with the sorts of patterns that you would employ as you develop those archetypes and templates. And unfortunately, that head knowledge has to be built up as it reflects your local use cases. There aren't necessarily any hard and fast rules about you know, storing you know, uh, a structure for outpatient assessment templates, for example, which has the same headings. That's very much up to you. 
This flow describes where a consuming application may consume data stored within a clinical data repository. Where the patient has a history of adverse reactions, this data could be utilized by the system itself or indeed appended to by a clinical user via some form of data entry form. However, if the patient has no known history of adverse reactions, the clinical user may want to commit this as a negation statement. This is an additional archetype. In addition to this, you may want to record a clinical review has taken place and that the clinical user has substantiated that the record is true and correct as of a specific date and time. You could argue that both of these additional archetypes create a more robust clinical record as a result. However, these archetypes also potentially extend the initial use case. So whilst it could be best practice to capture clinical data, there might be a trade-off which leads to a more complex application as a result. This presents the challenge of not just knowing the rules and best practice, but also making decisions on how to implement them. So here's an interesting thought. At what point is a standard a standard? So do we just accept the judgment of the wider clinical modeling community, for example, and never have to worry about how to capture blood pressure again, considering the demonstrable amount of effort that's gone into curate that model as it currently stands? Or look at something like problem and diagnosis. However, with the example that we encountered for the archetype that had to be you know, remodeled from scratch and had to have a new approach, our use case was the demonstration of the, the first example where that's used in a live clinical application, as far as we know. So therefore, we are then contributing to that standard. We can cite where that's been used and provide that as evidence, essentially, that this model works. There will always be the need and the innate flexibility to support multiple use cases and the development of local archetypes for specific Welsh use cases. The archetype object model is flexible enough to do both, but we acknowledge that there is a concern with regards to the role of governance in terms of what international standards we accept and what local governance structures exist to ensure that they are fit for purpose. Which brings me on to who these authorities are and where is the resource base for clinical modeling as it currently stands. We accept the requirement to model data and develop these as standards for NHS Wales in terms of structured data persistence. We also require the function to integrate this data for interoperability purposes, for example, creating HL7 fire resources or profiles. These processes are joined and they are codependent and we need specialists to do both. But what makes for a good clinical modeler? We've held several clinical modeling workshops and open air related events at NWIS. And the feedback that I'm getting is quite interesting in terms of how the concept of open air is absorbed and what it represents is different depending on what your role and experience is. What this speaks to is that clinical modeling is a discipline in its own right. And unfortunately, a discipline that we find lacking currently in NWIS. One recent suggestion from a colleague was to look to the clinical coding community. Is it possible that as we move to a more digitized ecosystem, the reliance on paper reduces, and then we can use this skill set and tweak it in order to do it upfront and support clinical modeling, as opposed to now at the tail end, interpreting paper records. Whilst this sounds like a significant challenge, and it is, there is a responsibility to ensure that actually we're building a stable foundation on which to store structured data for use as a single source of truth and in a once for Wales capacity. But as I've stated, some of the use cases that we're encountering in NHS Wales have already been catered for by the open air community. So that resource is already there. The benefits of robust tooling an impressive clinical governance layer that surrounds and supports the archetype curation process means that we can approach this to develop an incremental digital view of the patient's record as and when the use cases present the need. The next steps for open air at NWIS are to find a suitable use case to demonstrate a live exemplar project and to test this then in the live environment, which we're seeking to do over the next few months. Thank you for listening.
If you have any queries, please get in touch.